So, I've been sent a package from a company called IC Station, and they decided, you know, hey, I'm a YouTuber, I can do a little review on the product. So, I said, why not? It's uh, nice of them to do it, you know. I'll be a nice person back and send them this, or send them a review. So, I got what should be a couple wireless modules for Arduino. And you get a couple of stickers. This one says, if there's any problems, send it back. Same thing. And it says, if I write a review, you get five bucks. And as soon as I sent two of them, I can get assuming ten dollars, I don't know. But we'll open these up. See what's inside. And these are what I ordered. They're NRF something or others. Uh, I don't know if I can read the ship number. It's NRF 24L01 is what they are. So these are the antenna version of the module. And from what you can see, maybe if I can get it to zoom in on there. Uh, it's just going to be a butt, isn't it? Nope, I can't get it to pull a focus on that. This is really hard to do. Nope, I cannot. I'm sorry. I will have to. Let's see. Let's see if I can pull a focus here. Aha! That works. Uh, the phone's are in, but I'm going to keep going. So these are the modules. As usual, it's actually a very decent soldering job. I think I see a little bit of leftover flux or something right there, but not bad, not bad. And if they are the ones who make the modules, a thing that hobbyists are looking for is these pins to be breadboard spaced. So you have about as many pin spacings is I think about three or four of them so that way you can plug these directly into a breadboard but they have the standard NRF pin spacing and these are the antenna version so you get antennas and these just screw right on I'm not sure if they're the standard SMA or the reverse SMA, but if you need to know which one is which, this one has the pin, and this one has the hole. So they will made up like that, and that's the type of antenna you're going to get. And any changes, they'll uh, probably post that on their website. I don't know, I might even post it in the description if I see any changes. It's got a nice low profile crystal, so it fits nice. You got a little tiny chip and a bunch of passives. That's really all this is, is a really, really simple RF module with an antenna. So I'm gonna plug this into my robot and we'll see what we can get with that. Since we have two of the guys, so that way you can talk back and forth, these are transceivers, so you can talk between the two. A really nice packaging. I don't think it's any uh, static sensitive packaging, which is kind of a downside. But hey, the shipping was free. The product was free. You know, it, it is slow shipping, the standard shipping from China. I don't know if you can uh, speed it up or not, but it will get there. So yeah, that's the unboxing. I'll plug them in and we'll see if they work. All right, so these are 3.3 volt compatible modules. Now this is the kind of packaging I would have expected to see these guys come in. Because as you can see, this is coated in a foil and that keeps all the static away from your device so you don't blow it up. And you know, you don't want these to just pop in the mail. So that's a problem. The next problem with these 
is that you can see this board here is nice strip board. So with any normal IC, like, let's see, we'll just pull one of the, whoa, actually, you know what, let's just do that. With any normal IC, you can see there's spacing here, and they fit right in between that space. And on this type of board, if you stick it in, maybe, I don't know, might be able to, you can see that the pins go between that, and then there's rails in between. So each of these individual bins break out. With these modules, if you can fix this and you know move the crystal back and move a couple of those caps back and move some parts back, you can do that with this module too, I'm pretty sure. So that's your next problem. We'll take and let's see if I can get that plugged in. Sorry about the terrible angle. You plug that in. So the pins bent a little bit. Plug that in. Oops. Now all your pins are shorted together. And the same with this one. If you plug it in, you can't get the pins to go onto this side. So, oops. Now these two are shorted together. Those two, those two, those two, you know. On and on. So now all those pins are shorted together. That's the first major drawback to these because. I'm pretty sure the hobbyist community is the one that's going to be using them. Now the the plus side to this is that the pins are all compact and in a really nice small package. So if you want to solder them to a board, this one's been used a bit, like this where each individual pad is there, you can plug it in, maybe, and all of the pins will be in one nice compact little square. So you can just solder a nice small bit of your board. So that is the only plus side to that. But I'm sure it would be nice if you had two versions or just one version with the pins separated. That way you can just tink, pop it in the board, run it, test it. You know, that's, that's the main purpose that hobbyists would want it for. And I've heard that from quite a few people researching these. Done. So, on to the next. Okay, so I don't have any driving or anything, but what I do have is I have it pinging. Yay! It's not going to focus to it, is it? Oh, there we go. So, it's about 11 milliseconds ping all the way around. And to show you that it's actually wireless, I'm going to nip the antenna off of it, and we'll take ourselves for a little tiny walk here. Just, just a little walk. And you'll see as we take just a couple steps away, it goes away. Oh, still working. Wow, that's, that's quite amazing. I'm like almost across the basement here, and now it's starting to kick out on me. So way over there in the distance is the robot. And it's just now at my room starting to kick it out, and if you move closer, there's your signal. So that's not bad at all. So that's uh, the wireless performance without the antenna. Now I'm sure if you wanted no antenna on it, you would have just bought the non-antenna version. This version's a little more expensive because of the antenna, but it works great because of it. So, what do I give the final verdict on these modules? From a hobbyist standpoint, I give them around a 7 out of 10. They work, they do what they're supposed to do, they do it very well, they got quite the range on them, and, you know, the only problem is that connector. And that's what kills for the hobbyist. From a manufacturer's point, they're okay. You know, they're probably more of an 8 out of 10. The only problem with them there is still that header and the fact that they would probably break pretty quick because of the uh, soldering job on them. But overall, they're probably going to get a pretty good rating because... Uh, they're useful in multiple things. 
Now, in a normal manufacturing, you'd probably just solder this module directly to the board. You wouldn't use those headers because that costs money. So, you know, it's not that bad of a price. It's uh, six bucks or whatever for one of these. So go over to IC Station, check them out. Get yourself some uh, pretty cheap little modules. They have the uh, chip antenna, or not the chip antenna, but the circuit board wire antenna as well. So uh, that's about it for the review, and see you in the next video.